And welcome back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Democratic State Representative from Nashville, Brenda Gilmore, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host, Steve Gill, just back from New Hampshire. Welcome. Yeah, nice to you. see you both. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about yesterday's big announcement as we tape this on Friday. Uh, the new theme park coming to Gaylord out next to the Gaylord Opryland Resort. <coughs> I guess it's really been talked about since they closed the old Opryland theme park back in 1997. Always kind of dismissed, no, we're not going to do this, and mm -hmm. now here it comes. This could be a real boom for that area. 450 jobs, a whole new infrastructure could be real positive. Absolutely. I think just a, the notion that we're going to get some new jobs here in Tennessee, although we did get good news this week that unemployment right. had gone down to 8.7 in Tennessee, but we still need more, even more jobs, and a large portion of them will be full-time, not just seasonable, be full-time. So I'm excited about it. And it also proves that Dolly is more than just a good singer. She's a very <laughs> shrewd businesswoman. Business woman, yes. I you know, Colin Reed likes to point out that they shut the park five years before, <laughs> before he, he got came. there, mm -hmm. the uh, CEO of Gaylord. Uh, and it's, it's the $50 million investment. It is the phase one of what will be some other developments right. over there. And I think it will be helpful to Gaylord, but I think it will be particularly helpful to all that Music Valley Drive area that has really been hurting in terms of the, the, uh, the retail shops, in terms of the motel and, other, and rest, restaurants over there. That's where I think you'll see the biggest beneficiaries. And as you pointed out, he likes to say this happened before he came on board. And he's the first Gaylord executive yesterday to say this was a mistake to shut it down and begin with because obviously they're going to look at this as a way to attract people to the hotel, sell package deals, mm -hmm. send your kids to the theme park, dad goes plays golf, mom goes to Opry Mills. This could really increase the number of people who book three and four day uh, weekend trips. And the governor and the mayor yesterday made a big point of the fact that it really does tie in the tourism across Tennessee, that you've got Dollywood and all her additional properties there in East Tennessee. You've also got the Great Smokies. This helps further buttress some of the uh, tourism here. And then, you know, the idea is that you'll also have folks going to Memphis for all the other uh, pieces there. So it really is part of a statewide tourism focus. Makes Nashville much more attractive and continues that tourist industry look, doesn't it? does. It? I was about to say that they're really going to have to be careful, though, that they carve out a, a, a unique niche mm -hmm. so that they don't take people from Nashville Shores or don't take anyone from Metro Park that's already out there. So I would say that they would be definitely going from the tourists that's outside of Tennessee. A few issues you're dealing with. The state legislature, TEA, this week announced that they would like to see some changes to the teacher evaluation law, which was passed last year. The governor is willing for an outside evaluation, but he wants to wait a little while, saying it's only six months. Should we be looking at changes now? Has it had enough time to work? Well, I think the teachers just feel like that they've just been dumped on. There was just so many changes in such a short uh, window. Uh, you had the teacher evaluation has changed, and then we had race to top. Uh, yes, you had uh, tenure and just um, the fact that they can no longer have an association to represent them. Now they have this collaborative group. And so teachers, I'm not sure that they can wait. Um, I don't know if we'll see... Uh, their frustration come out in the polls when we go mm -hmm. to the polls in August or not. But what I hear in the streets that teachers are very frustrated. They feel like that they, in fact, have been betrayed. Well, I think if the whole idea is to improve the quality of education for our kids, which should be the focus, mm -hmm. then we ought to see if it's working. And that's what Race to the Top, that's what all this has been about. And I think that there's not been any amount of time since we really started this school year to really judge whether you're going to see some of the long-term changes that we want to see. I think we need to keep the focus on what have we done that benefits the kids, not just focus on what's good for the teachers. We've been doing that for a long time. The teachers have asked if this stays in place for this first year, that this be a pilot year where... If there's any not negative evaluations, it wouldn't affect teachers that they would kind of look at the system this year and then next year mm -hmm. it would actually go into implementation where teachers could be removed. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. I think letting sure, making sure that people have an understanding of the rules before you judge them by those rules is fair. I, I think there ought to be at least maybe a gray area where if you fall into to sort of the, well, you're not doing well, but, but it is a new system. But if somebody way misses the mark, then I think we ought to be getting rid of them sooner rather than later because every year that goes by, that's another 30 kids in their sure. classroom or more that are being affected. We can't wait because those kids can't wait. I like the idea that we're actually listening to teachers, too, and giving them an opportunity to have some input in the process. I think that they will feel more valued, and therefore they'll be more productive. And after all, they probably have the greatest influence on our children than anyone. Steve's favorite topic, the income tax in Tennessee. It's moving closer and closer towards a vote by the, the general public in mm -hmm. 2014, if it all goes as well next year. Mm -hmm. It is in that time frame now. It has passed both the Senate and the House. And still some say it's really not necessary, that it's already illegal in Tennessee to have an income tax that has been declared unconstitutional. So I guess the question is, is it for politics? Does it really need it? If it does pass, there's no question 
Constitution would have to be changed for an income tax to come to Tennessee. Well, I wasn't in the uh, state house uh, several years ago when we had uh, voters who actually came down here and honked horns and drove around the Capitol and showed that they were very displeased with the income tax vote. So it's very clear to me that the citizens do not want mm -hmm. the income tax. At the same time, though, I hate to see us. Number one, it's because um, we say we don't want federal government on our back. I hate to see this state body tie the hands of local government and future legislators. So I, I personally would like us, since the judges, Supreme Court, have said time after time after time that it's unconstitutional and that we won't have to worry about an income tax, I would rather us not take it uh, as to, a constitutional amendment. Yes, and, and I'm, I'm a little leery in a way about tinkering with the Constitution unless it's absolutely necessary. I think the problem was that it was unconstitutional the last time that House <laughs> Speaker Jimmy Nafee and the Democrats were trying to force it through against the will of the people. And interestingly, Jimmy Nafee voted against banning an income tax. These At folks the request were saying, of a Republican government, we may say. These <laughs> folks were saying that the unconstitutionality of it could be overturned by a Democrat Supreme Court. Uh, so I think we ought to put it beyond any reach. Uh, we look at other states that have state income taxes, sales taxes is the whole bit, and they're in worse financial shape than the state of Tennessee is. So I think that uh, listening to the will of the people and making the change to make it absolutely, positively, no, no question way. clear, no state income tax in Tennessee. Well, a minute to go, South Carolina will happen as we're taping on this on Friday. On Saturday, it's up in the air again now. In fact, Newt Gingrich looks like he may win South Carolina, which really throws the GOP nomination up in the air. And you have the folks that are selling TV ads and radio ads in, in Florida and in the states to come hope. No, Newt Gingrich wins because it will continue this battle on. I think he wins in South Carolina, and then this battle is going to continue. I think he got a, a tremendous boost as a result of the debate. The people down there really liked him, just judging by the audience and their reaction to his responses. So I think that that helped him tremendous, and I don't think really that uh, Milk did, a, did that well in, the, in, in the debate. And if he wins, if Gingrich wins, it puts Tennessee more in play for Super Tuesday, makes the votes here in Tennessee mean more. And if that's been a while that that's been the case, that we'll be able to actually vote, have, have, play, have candidates come to town to do something other than simply raise money and take it to some other location. There will be about ten states that will be in play on Super Tuesday, Tennessee, Georgia, Virginia, and some others. I think Tennessee has probably been going red and it's getting redder <laughs> over the last few years. It would be interesting to see um, the impact of the voter ID. I think I'm, I'm just real keen and trying to observe the impact that that's going to have on voters. We got you dressed in red. We just get you to move the rest <laughs> of the way.